Hi, we're Chicks Talking Shift, and we've had a great conversation that we think you're really going to enjoy, and it's about boundaries and setting boundaries. So in this particular episode, we talk about the purpose of boundaries, which is setting your space of what you're ex willing to experience and what you're not, why it takes building your voice as a muscle to even get to the point to where you can set boundaries, how it empowers us to no end to learn how to do it, and how to create a, a pact with someone, to create a safe space, to be able to learn to exercise your voice so you can eventually get to the point to where you set boundaries. Oh, I love this conversation. Uh, let me tell you, it's not fun <laughs> to set <laughs> boundaries. Uh, it's not the funnest thing in the world, but it is extremely empowering. And we talk about how this level of freedom that it, about setting boundaries provides is like no other. Uh, we, we have such a, a great conversation around how some of us <laughs> rationalize and therefore we don't exercise the boundaries like we should because we have the tendency to rationalize. We talk about just knowing yourself, who you are, who you're not, and when others are testing your boundaries. And uh, all these, some really good stuff. So we're glad you've tuned in and let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Chicks Talking Shift. I'm Angel. And I'm Alicia. And we are so glad you're here. We are so glad you're here. And want to, first of all, thank you for your loving support. And, uh, you know, Alicia, I know you mentioned it last time, but oh my gosh, uh, it is so cool uh, that we have people sharing these conversations with us because I have to tell you, you know, we, we were so busy before COVID and the pandemic. Uh, it's like we, we never really had time to catch up. And that was one of the blessings of COVID for me was to be able to sit and chat with you for an hour or two and, and really talk through what's happening. That's really helped me. So I wanna just thank you, Alicia, uh, for being there for me through this, this crazy time and helping me navigate through it because that's, uh, that's what we need right now. I love you. <laughs> oh, I love you so much. You say an hour or two. I have, I have recollection of four and five hour conversations. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, there, well, time isn't even an issue when we're having conversations. Yeah. It's, it's like a time warp. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do the time warp. I don't know that song. <laughs> Is that a new one? I don't know. It's from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, do you know I never saw it? Is there something wrong with me? I know. I know. No, it took me, it wasn't until just, I don't know, the last five or 10 years that I've seen it either. So, but I knew that I, I'd heard of that song before. So I knew oh, that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a crazy okay. thing. I think I'm the only person on the planet, well, at least from our era, that hasn't seen it. I, yeah, or experienced it, but anywho, anywho, I just love our conversations. And one of the biggest things that you've helped me with, Alicia, through a lot of this is making me look, yeah, you hold the mirror up beautifully for me, 
but really making me look at uh, my boundaries and some of the things that I'm uh, not only relationships, but some of the things that I allow into my life that aren't serving me <laughs> energetically, emotionally, that I continue to do anyway, knowing that it's it's not really for my highest good or anybody else around me for that matter. And so because you have helped me so much <laughs> around this uh, this boundary topic, um, I thought it would be really, really cool to just engage in a conversation and record the conversation for others to hear what you have to say about it. So what, how would you describe boundaries? What are they? Why are they important for, for us? What you think is how it benefits us as well. I did a I did a video on <clears throat> boundaries. You know, boundaries is is a common topic that I talk about. It's one of my favorite topics. It really is. And so um, I talk about it a lot in my in my Ask Alicia column. And I've done a couple of videos on Ask Alicia with that. So there's some you know <clears throat> some information there. Um, boundaries. Boundaries define our space. And they define what we're willing to experience and let into that space, and also defines what we're not willing to experience and what we're not going to let into that space. So I kind of see it as drawing a circle around us and sitting with what do I want to experience? And you have to know yourself first, right? To be able to set boundaries, you have to know what your wants and your needs are to be able to even begin to set boundaries. So in a simple, in a simple way, that's kind of how I would represent what boundaries are and their importance. Well said. It is. It's like having a border <laughs> around your, your <laughs> little field, your energy field. <laughs> yes. Yes energetically, emotionally, you've helped me recognize those indicators of when I need to really enforce the boundaries with certain situations, certain people, certain uh, responses to things. When I start, uh, and, and I know we talked about awareness, but when I started really becoming aware of the triggers and just stopping and going, wow, I'm really getting worked up over this. Where's this coming from? That's an opportunity for a boundary right there. And, and, and these, these indicators that just knowing what feels off. Yes. What feels like it's, uh, it's a kind of an icky feeling, you know, it's not this happy, joyous feeling. It's the opposite of that. I don't even know how to describe it, but it is a, uh, that's, that's when, you know, that is one of the indicators, uh, that, that a boundary needs to be set. And it's, um, you know, it, integrity, um, all those things that you talk about so much in your coaching sessions that, uh, are really the, the keys, I guess, to recognizing in yourself when you are allowing people to cross that line or allowing situations to cross that line or what have you. Oftentimes the triggers come, well, it goes back to what we talked about in one of our previous shows about feelings being barometers, right? And showing us, giving us a sense of direction. What feels good, what doesn't feel good. And um, especially for the things that don't feel real good, recognizing that and then kind of digging deeper, ex ex self excavating to yeah. try to get a little bit of clarity around, hmm, that doesn't feel so good. What, what feels bad about that? And, you know, oftentimes it is um, rooted in respect, you know, in other people respecting. Um, you being able to um, 
proclaim what you want to experience and what you don't want to experience. And especially once you've voiced it, somebody continuing to um, exhibit that behavior over and over and over again, when you've already said very clearly, I don't like that. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel right. That feels disrespectful. But they keep stepping over that line. I mean, that's why it's so important that w to set boundaries, you've got to be, first, you've got to know yourself. And you've got to know what you're willing to experience and what you're, what you're not. And then secondly, being able to articulate that clearly, communicate that clearly to somebody else as far as what your boundary is. And so that's a little caveat about this particular conversation because as we kind of get into it and we're saying, oh, you need to set your boundaries and this and that and the other thing, there's some people that are gonna be watching that are like, there's no way I could set a boundary. And part of that comes with the fact that if you haven't found your voice yet, it's gonna be really difficult to set a boundary. So for some, this boundary conversation is, might be a little bit advanced because maybe they haven't found their voice yet. And there's no shame in that. You know, that most of us have been at, at, at places and at times in our life where we didn't have our voice. And just because you can set a boundary doesn't mean that you have that, that, you have that voice across the board in all circumstances. I'm pretty good with boundaries. There's places where I have difficulty setting it, you know? And so that's the thing it, is that for the ones that it's like, th this conversation doesn't even make sense to me because there's no way I'd be able to do that. Then what we're looking for is the awareness of the fact that you haven't yet learned how to speak, how to use your voice to speak your needs to somebody else. And so that's what you want to baby step your way to on the way to the goal of setting boundaries is finding, creating a safe space for you to, to be able to speak your needs and to use your voice without, feel, without fear of repercussion, that something negative is going to happen or you're going to have to fight or that somebody's going to make you feel bad. And so one of the ways that, that I do that with people is we create a pact. And so what I say is we have an understanding here and now that this is a safe place for you to use your voice. It's a safe place for you to speak your needs. It's a safe space for you to speak your boundaries. And it's a safe place for you to get angry or, or not be in your highest self with everything that comes along because this is where we practice. And so if I have that agreement with you, then you know, okay, this is what she said. Okay, I'm going to try it. And what I find is that once people have created that safe space with another person that, yes, this is our agreement, then you get to practice there. And then once you've practiced there, then you move out another layer and another, and another ring in your, in your inner circle. And then you start to do it with close people that are close to you. And then before you know it, as you exercise that muscle, those rings get further and further out. And before you know it, you're speaking it you know, to, to your family members and you're speaking it to your employer and you're speaking it and it strengthens that muscle. So that's kind of one of the caveats for this larger conversation for people that, you know, are like, there's no way I could set a boundary. Okay, that's fine. No, you don't have to set the boundary. But what you know is your voice is probably the issue. So let's start working on that. Wow. <laughs> How awesome for you to create that space for people. You do. You do that for me. Uh, absolutely. And when certain things don't make sense, uh, you have a way of just opening up that space for me to talk through it and make sense of it and then get that clarity that sometimes is needed uh, for me to even voice what I'm thinking. Because a lot of times <clears throat> it doesn't make sense up here. Some of the things that we're 
we're going through, especially right now through this pandemic and all the divisiveness. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's it, a lot of these boundaries in our, our outer world are being uh, totally moved out of the way and not uh, being reinforced, I guess, the way I'd like them to be. And so our inner world is, is, is going through the same type of chaos, it seems like. And so having someone to help me articulate what is going on so I could even know where to even set a boundary and, and, and how to set that boundary, that's huge, huge to have someone in your life that can do just that and make sense of the chaos out there and in here because that that is that's really the first first step in finding your voice knowing even how to articulate what's going on and and weed through all that confusion yeah well and to your, confusion. yeah to your point that's going to be especially important to extroverts right because extra, extroverts process verbally. It, they don't know how they feel until it comes out of their mouth, right? And so, but an introvert, you know, they're, they're, they're much more in their inner world and a lot of times have all that sussed out and all that, you know, it's so interesting because I have friends that, that are people of kind of few words, but man, when they say something, it gets your attention and that's because they process internally you know and so it's especially important for extroverts to have that space to be able to even say because it just comes pouring out and sometimes you don't realize it until you actually say it it's it up here there's kind of we're kind of hidden from ourselves sometimes and sometimes there's some games that we play we play hide and seek with ourselves which when we when we when we're able to articulate it and we're able to communicate it all of a sudden it's like oh this has been up here all this time and now that i've said it it sounds kind of silly you know you get to see yourself it's a mirror <laughs> and you might do do a lot of silly things and that's one of the reasons that i love you so much i know i know I know. I say, I, it's like, how did I get in this situation? <laughs> I was like, what, what did I just say? Right. What? Yeah. I, I, you just kind of look at yourself like, what the heck? It's funny. So true. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's once you do say it and express it, then it's, it's almost like, uh, the universe takes it and runs with it and heals it. <laughs> it. But it's it's having the voice to put it out there and saying it. And, uh, you know, we're in a place of healing, I think. I really think 2020 is the year of healing. And, and I keep going back to what you taught me. But uh, you have, because through these conversations, you, you share so many of your insights. Uh, in that healing process is the, uh, the ability to um, identify uh, what's hurting, identify that pain, identify those uh, awkward emotions uh, that you're having, uh, whether it be uh, guilt or shame or doubt or anything that's tampering with your joy and happiness and inner peace because those are those are the places you need to set the boundaries when uh, and it could be parts of your past that you have to come to peace with and set a, a boundary and say you know that's part of the reinventing stage of transformation it's stepping out into the highest vision of who you are and know who you who you are in your fullest potential and starting to take the action steps to become that person and 
have the uh, adopt the belief system of that person uh, behave like that person would behave is that person smiling and happy does that person uh, communicate well honestly know her or his truth and speak it without fear uh, what is that highest vision of yourself that you have and then in that reinventing stage, you start to practice being that person. That's who you are in your highest form. And you start to release the things that don't serve you or don't align with that vision. Um, but you're going to stumble and fall. Yeah. And that's part of the boundary setting game is you don't always win. You don't always get it right. Uh, I mean, you've known me uh, a long time and you've seen me stumble and fall and come back to the same conversation you're probably like i don't even want to talk to her about this again <laughs> when is she gonna get it right <laughs> but uh <laughs> we do we'll eventually get it right <laughs> i do well, trust myself and believe in myself that much but yes. sometimes it takes a while i think that's really important to know yeah. and you have patience i do have a lot of patience um, no, it's true. It you don't just decide one day I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna you know speak my boundaries and I'm gonna keep good ones and blah 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 blah. I mean, you can know internally that that's your goal, but the practice of it it is practice. And then just like with anything else, as you have the success, it it encourages, it gives you more courage, and it encourages you to do it a little bit more. And then over time you start to realize that something comes up, you deal with it, you speak it, you do what you have to do, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. Man, when this used to happen, I'd get all balled up. And I'd get in it with the process took forever, but look at how I just moved through that. And you get to see your growth. It's so fascinating to watch it. And it's, it's, it's for me, you know, you talk about, oh, you've known me so long and you've seen me stumble and you've seen me fall. And, and, and that's, that's, it, that's the process. But at the same time, there is no greater honor than to walk beside somebody and be let in in their personal process and to understand what their fears are, what their insecurities are, and what their difficulties are to be able to hold hands and say, you've got this, and I'm just here as your Jiminy Cricket to remind you of what you said was important to you. If you're not gonna be harangued, you're not gonna be, you know, you're, you're, you're not gonna be hit over the head. It's just a, a, a presence bearing witness to your process. And so it takes over and over and over and over again. It's not success and failure. I mean, there are times that you're going to do it and, and th those boundaries are going to stick and then you're not experiencing that thing with that person anymore. And you think, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that we've gotten to this point and that we're clear on what this is and they're not challenging me anymore. That is one of the things about boundaries, okay? So let's talk about this. Let's talk about the dance steps because that's one of the things that boundaries do. When you have a behavior that you've entered into with somebody and it happens over and over and over again, everybody kind of gets used to the dance that you do with that routine. And when you finally decide, I don't wanna do that dance anymore. And when you're clear about it, and then you can speak what your needs are and what your boundaries are, you are changing the dance steps with somebody else. And oftentimes it's not unusual for them to buck up against you because they were perfectly comfortable with the old dance that you were doing. And so that's why when you speak them, you gotta be consistent with them and you gotta keep showing up and reinforcing the boundary and reinforcing the boundary because that's the only way that they learn that we're really serious about what we're saying and what our needs are. 
And then sometimes it's one thing for the dance steps to be changed, but sometimes, and I would think this whole COVID thing that we're in with how everything is shifting in the fact that sometimes it's not just the dance steps that change, but the music too. The entire choreography changes, which can feel awkward to everybody as we start to step in in a different way and say, I don't want to do that dance anymore. This is the dance that I want to do. Won't you join me? We'll, be, we'll both be a lot happier if this happens. So that's a Absolutely. big one. Yeah. Oh, so true. Great analogy too. Yeah. Nobody likes the dance moves to be changed without knowing about it. And so that's where your voice does come in. And it is, it is the ultimate freedom. When you have your boundaries in place and you're exercising them, it is the ultimate, ultimate freedom. And there, and we know how important freedom is in our lives. Everybody wants to feel free, you know, be that free spirit, uh, be financially free, be just free of worry. We, we love freedom and uh, boundaries help us feel that freedom, that personal freedom. It, there's nothing quite like it. Uh, it is one of the most powerful practices, I believe, in personal growth that, that there is. And it, it is a practice and you nailed it. So I think now more than ever to exercise boundaries for our, our own good, our, our well-being, our mental health. I think uh, we're just getting trampled on by so much stuff, and especially women today being pulled in so many directions. Uh, but it's going to make the world a difference if you can get back into the routines with these solid boundaries. It's going to feel different. It's going to be more joyous than it was before the pandemic because we were all like little hamsters, you know, on the hamster wheel, just busy, 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 you know, going through life. And often on, autom often on automatic pilot. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, I think that the pandemic has shaken up, it's brought awareness. It's brought more awareness to the, to the forefront and the fact that it took us off of automatic pilot is like we talked before it, it, uh, inter it disrupted our routines and the patterns in our lives. So, and to your point, um, the, um, boundaries are a superpower. <laughs> yes, they are. They're a superpower. I see. I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, it reminds me of all oh, when we, when we first met and we became friends, you sent me, I still have it. I've got, you sent me a plaque it, that it was, a, it, it had a, a magnet on the back and it talked about, you know, with, with a, with a cape and a tiara, I believe I could change the world, you know, and it's so true. And so boundaries are a superpower and they empower us. And so, oh, who doesn't want to feel empowered? You know, so sometimes I imagine myself donning my little tiara and my little cape and like, oh, go out. <laughs> change the world, starting with me. Because I've got control over changing myself. There's not a whole lot of control I have externally. Yeah. You know? So, and I know superpowers are a big thing for you. I yeah. often think about super, when I think about superpowers, I think about you. I think, no. it's because of that. I think it's because of that magnet that you sent me. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, the whole power up people yes. concept came from tapping into our inner superpowers. That that's, that's really what it's all about, but it, it is a superpower. I forgot what I was going to say, but it's coming back. <laughs> this happens every time. I don't know why it's because I'm so engaged with what you're saying. And I'm like, yes, I'm in learning mode, but then I'm like, oh, wait, I should probably respond to that. Uh, I, I think, uh, <laughs> I don't know why this happens every single time. Um, hormones, girlfriend, hormones. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm a little bit further ahead of you. 
on the lifeline there. I'm gonna go with that. I'll go with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alternatives. Hormones can always be fixed. <laughs> that's true. That's true. If only I could set a boundary around my forgetfulness. <laughs> in your brain where nothing could escape. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I think, um, oh, I do remember now. We have the control to change. We have the ability to change. If, if we have any control over anything going on in the world, it's the ability to change. And you talked about being, um, having superpowers when you tap into the superpowers and you are exercising some of the stuff that we're talking about, becoming more self-aware, being more humble, having a strict boundary, knowing who you are, knowing who you're not, uh, and not any, letting anybody cross that line or any situation cross that line. You're setting an example for others in showing them another way to be it's that is another form of putting on your tiara and your cape yes. because it they just see that in something resonates within them saying huh i admire that there's something about that that's very strong and what we admire in other people we generally see in in our potential that we're not exercising. There's the difference between an admiration, admiring somebody and then being jealous. Admiration is love based. We're being jealous of somebody is, uh, is fear based. And so, but to have an admiration like that, and when you're practicing boundaries, um, I notice that the people around me may not like it, but there's an admiration that comes with it. And that's where, that's where the cape is because they're learning themselves to say, huh, I see the value in that. I'd like to be that. And, uh, and that's how we change the world, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah, if we all can be just a little better version of ourselves. <laughs> you know, maybe not the best version, that's, that's kind of hard to do, but uh, <laughs> take those baby steps that you talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. And so with the, with the boundary setting, you know, so what is boundary, what does boundary setting require? You know, well, we, we talked earlier that first and foremost, you have to have your voice. You can't set a boundary if you haven't found your voice yet. Right. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it requires clear communication, right? And so we don't set boundaries in anger those aren't generally going to be received well. So if we're in a situation to where we're angry and we realize that we need a boundary set, then the best thing to do is let the energy settle and then go back and have the conversation later when we're at ourselves, when we're feeling a little bit more in control so that we can communicate more neutrally. Because if there's anger in it, immediately the walls and the other person comes up and there's nothing about that that they're going to want to hear. But when you're able to go back and say, Hey, you know, that, that argument that we had earlier, that didn't really feel good. And I've been thinking about it. And there's a couple of things that I realized, you know, that you, um, there's this thing that you bring up all the time and it's annoying. Mm. And we've already talked about this over and over again. And I, I don't want to hear it anymore. You know, it, it's, you know, it's one thing to finally have your voice, finally know yourself to be able to say, okay, now I know I, I can speak this and to be able to speak it neutrally when you're in control and you can be received well. But the other secret is that don't set the boundary unless it, you're going to give it some teeth, right? Mm -hmm. Because it needs to have some sort of action that you're going to take if that other person 
decides to cross that boundary because you get to set your boundary, but they get to decide whether they're going to honor that boundary or not. So if they decide that they're not going to honor it, what then is what, what's your going to, what's your action going to be? Mm, Cause they will test you. Oh, they over will over again. Them like, Oh, she's not being for real. Yeah. That's just, I can, push the buttons and I know how to get her to, you know, change her mind on whatever it is. And, uh, and there are people who will test your boundaries to see how strong they are. And so to have teeth in them or, you know, drill them into the ground so that you don't step over them and you certainly don't allow other people to step over them, but you're not, uh, you're not moving it for anyone or any reason, because you're very clear, this is what serves you. Well, the, there, there's no doubt that the majority of the time that you set a boundary, especially with someone that you know well, that they're, gonna, that they're not gonna, that they're gonna challenge that boundary because what they'll do is they're looking for consistency. It's the same as, as, as disciplining your child, right? Yeah. If you tell them, if you do that, then, you know, I'm going to, or you're not going to, and you never follow up with it, then all you've done is undermine your power in the situation and you've undermined your word. Mm. And so when you've done that enough, they're going to keep, they're going to keep trying that thing because they're going to think, oh, well, maybe I'll get by with it this time, you know? And so what happens is that when you start to change the dance steps, they will play the music to see are you at yourself right now? Do you really mean what you say? Come on, the music's playing. Are we going to dance like we did before? Or are you going to go into that weird dance that I don't know yet? And I really kind of don't like because it makes me feel so awkward. And I was having a lot more fun getting my way with the other dance, right? <laughs> and so, and it's kind of, it's a bit of a hook because it's awareness. It's staying conscious and showing up consistently of, Yes, I told you this is a boundary. We're not doing that. Yes, I told you this is a boundary. We're not doing that. You try it again. I'm telling you. And once you keep showing up like that, eventually they get, mm, it's just not worth it anymore. Right. So that's the teeth that we're, that we're looking for. But yeah, know what your reaction or your action is going to be if they don't follow up. That can be one of the most complicated aspects of boundary setting. It is. It definitely is because uh, there, there are some situations where the people that are stepping over your boundaries, uh, you feel have a benefit in your life. Yeah. And it just takes a lot of energy to keep those people at bay and just say, come on, you know, honor my boundary, respect my boundaries and, and constantly push at you, it, it, you will get to a point where you just say, it's not worth my energy anymore. It's just not worth it. I don't want this. I want to feel free. I want to feel joy. I want to feel peace. And this is not that. I've tried. I've given it uh, to my best ability, uh, all that I can possibly give. And I'm not being honored and respected to where I need to be. And, and it's okay to release some of those things from our lives. That's a big part of boundary setting too, is, you know, we talk about the six stages of transformation, uh, is, is releasing those things in our lives. And it might be a toxic relationship in, in where people are stepping over your boundary, not respecting you. There's some toxicity in that. Good point. And so it's okay to release those relationships with love, <laughs> send them back out into the world. So like, okay, uh, it might be a little painful for a little while, but you might be better off in the long run and learn more about yourself without having to um, um, express so much energy in that direction. Um, but uh, identifying just some of the, the old belief patterns that maybe we've had in the past. I know uh, I've had the tendency to rationalize situations and 
I'm, you know, I, I, I'm the queen at rationalizing just everything. Oh, I'm the optimist, so that's okay. It's okay for me to do, that's okay. This is all right, just to do this for whatever reason. I, it, I will rationalize and find some reason that it's okay when it's really not. Yeah. And that's something that I am becoming aware of, awareness being another superpower. So I'm not rationalizing the situations to make it okay and uh, tampering with my own boundaries in certain things. Uh, so just being very clear on what you believe, knowing who you are, going back to what you said earlier, and and then behaving in that way, having the behaviors match that, but also releasing the behaviors such as rationalization <laughs> uh, that don't serve you and recognize when you do that, it's not serving you. Uh, releasing some of those barriers and blocks and it's, uh, it, it does start with awareness. Uh, going back to the last conversation we had Awareness is the shift <laughs> because it starts there. And then, uh, you know, boundaries um, is, is, it's really, when you release all that stuff, there's a void. And I know we've talked about that void, that awkward feeling. That's what change and transformation feels like. But it's in that void that your new self that you've never even experienced yet can step into. And it's just going to allow a little time, a little transition period before that new self just shows up. But rest assured, she will or he will. And, and you're going to love yourself even more or probably for the first time. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about rationalization for a minute. Okay. Well, it, 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 <laughs> Since I'm the queen of it, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, I think I know one of the reasons that you're the queen of it is because you are such a ray of sunshine and you're so full of joy and peace signs and unicorns and hearts and roses that you like to be happy and you like everybody else to be happy. And, you, mm -hmm. and it's difficult to recognize the shadow aspects of people that are showing up, right? Oh, and the ultimate people pleaser. I am. I think that's, yeah, that's why I showed up on this planet. To add some, you know, sunshine and light. So, it's on. Yes. Sister. It's why I love you so much. Yeah. You bring out the little girl in me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't grow up, so... <laughs> So I got someone to play with, eh? Yeah. <laughs> this is like our playground. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so true. It is like a playground. I love it. But the, so the ras rationalization, first of all, comes from um, you wanting everybody to be okay. You want to be okay. You want them to be okay. And so you just kind of want to keep the vibe up, right? And sometimes calling them on their shift kind of lowers the vibe, right? Because it brings us into an uncomfortable, an uncomfortable space. Mm. So I think part of the reason that sometimes the rationalization comes up is because it keeps having to, it keeps us from having to have the encounter and having to sit in the difficult spaces with the clear communication to hash it out and to create the boundary of saying, I don't want to have this experience anymore. Yeah, but who suffers? Who suffers in the long run? That person doesn't suffer or that situation. It, it's, um, yeah, for people like me, that is, uh, it's self-sabotaging though. And there's nothing better. There's nothing better than going to bed at night and going, you know what? You did a good job today. You kept to those boundaries. You stuck to those boundaries and it is empowering and it's free. And I'm sorry that others may not like it or they're still adapting, but I've, I know 
it's the best thing for me. And I know that they're seeing something change in me that maybe they should be looking at themselves. And that's the problem. People don't like change. <laughs> Typically, that's why this, this pandemic has really rocked our worlds. It's like everything changed. We're just like, what is going on? And, uh, and so we don't, we don't adapt to change very well until now because we're, we, we have no choice. It's not an option anymore. It is, it is absolutely a necessity to learn, to adapt and flow with change. And uh, there are a lot of people who are just stuck in their ways who are not as adaptable and changing the dance. And so when you start to change, that is almost like a threat to the other person saying, oh, yes. yeah, look at her. Wow. <laughs> Exercising boundaries or what have you. And now that means I have to change. I don't want to change. No. Well, we don't go, we don't evolve at the same time as, as everybody else. And I don't know. I think it's just becoming more aware of the people in your life, knowing that they're not evolving at the same pace you are. And, and that's all the more reason to have, have boundaries for yourself as you're growing and evolving and waking up to, to new, um, a whole new level of consciousness uh, or spirituality or whatever you want to call it. And, and somebody else might not be there, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at us, Angel. Look at what COVID, there's been so many COVID blessings. I know. And I know I, so many people that have had COVID blessings. And that does not mean that I'm not cognizant of the fact that there are so many people having a hard time right there out there and there's so much struggle and there's so much unsurety and relationships a lot of relationships are ending right now they're not making it through this you right know? and it's because there were already fractures in the relationship maybe the communication wasn't so good maybe the respect wasn't so good you know and then when you put you know being kind of um locked down with somebody that your relationship wasn't good without the coping mechanisms like we've talked and then on top of the, that the kids are home 24 7 and it and then maybe there's financial difficulty and and fear and oh my gosh you talk about piling on oh, this is so fun what a great conversation yeah. as always yeah. Yeah. well we hope you've uh, you've enjoyed it as well so thanks for uh Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being you and bringing the gifts that you bring. And it's time to put them to good use. And we'd love for you to join our community if you haven't already, so that we can encourage one another as we're all trying to figure this stuff out and navigate through all these crazy changes and, uh, bunch of shift that we're going through <laughs> so yeah <laughs> well and subscribe to our youtube channel and uh, hit the bell if you'd like to get the videos um when they come out sometimes they come out before they're even posted on facebook so that's a good thing oh and i'll post in the links i've got a, i'll post some of my columns links to my columns that are about boundaries and maybe that'll be helpful too definitely yeah. Yep. And your videos and all that good stuff, your sage insights for sure. Very helpful stuff. I encourage you to go to askalicia.com and uh, tap into Alicia's gifts. I know I've certainly benefited from being in your presence. Awesome. So thank you. This the is a huge feeling, gift. The feeling <laughs> is so mutual. And we're so glad you guys join us. It makes us so happy that that uh, we've had the response from you that we've had and and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys again and hearing from you leave us a comment tell us a little something about what you like or what's your shift been like you know and what are, what are some of your struggles and you know we'll pay attention to what's going on and maybe it'll trigger a new topic that we want to talk about right definitely yeah yeah uh, it's so good to talk to you right. Friend, another beautiful day. I love you. you. Can't wait to see you. Love next you. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.
Oh, your shirt's so cute. It's like you have a um mandala. Yeah, on your oh, that's lovely. I'm feeling a little wild. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Awesome. But last time in the video, I was blink, 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 blinking, like, because my eyes were so dry from the allergies. Right. And, I, and when I saw the video playback, I'm like, oh my God, I wonder if anybody got my Morse code, <laughs> my secret message. <laughs> Butterfly kisses. <laughs> and I got contacts in today. And I don't think that I'm as blinky. I'll see when I when I play the video back, but I don't think I was as blinky. So I didn't notice. No, I didn't notice at all. I didn't notice in the last one either. So I'm I, glad. I couldn't quit blinking. And I couldn't quit itching my nose and my ear itched and everything else. So um yeah, so maybe no more is codes messages <laughs> this time, which some right? And she was flirting with me. Right? <laughs> she's batting her eyes at me again. <laughs> oh, she's so coquettish. <laughs> oh, that was a big word. <laughs> I can tell you how to spell it if you want to look it up. <laughs> how do you spell it? Are you going to look it up? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know how to spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. I can too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was always the winner of the spelling bees, not, not like the big spelling bees that they have now. Back in the olden days, they didn't have the big giant ones that they have now. Let's spell it. Ready? Oh, gosh, I'd have to visualize it in my head. Oh. And, and to try to do it, the go ahead, show off. A-N-T-I-D-I-S-E-S-T-A-B-L-I-S-H-M-E-N-T-A-R-I-A-N-I-S-M. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> so this is obviously one of your party tricks. <laughs> 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 you know what another one is? <clears throat> Did Tennessee with Arkansas? <laughs> Idaho. Alaska, <laughs> Ohio, Hawaii. <laughs> okay, maybe this like playground trick from when I was seven. I know the planets in order from the sun. <laughs> wow, you would, Miss Universe. <laughs> Mrs. Universe to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Please apologize to Marty. <laughs> Mr. And Mrs. Universe. <laughs> well, I wonder how things have changed because we got robbed of one of our planner, uh, planners. One of our <laughs> <laughs> oh, What do you mean? Someone stole one of our planets? Huh? Do what? Yeah, we lost a planet. They recategorized one of them. So there used to be nine planets and they went to eight and I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> shift happens. <laughs> <laughs> Planetary shift happens, happens too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, planets are going through the same shift we are, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so true. Oh my gosh, definitely. Uh, they're like, well, you know what? We set this boundary. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're now going to another universe. Yeah, we've kicked you out of the inner circle. You can go find your own universe. <laughs> Stupid references like um I, I'm learning. I'm learning. After the last video, I brought oh. tickets because <laughs> I couldn't disengage myself before from the recording. And so here I am wiping my nose. I'm like, I have tissues. <laughs> She comes prepared. She comes prepared. Yeah. See, good. I just repeated that. How often do I do that? I need to stop doing that. It's Is okay it? under certain circumstances to drive point homes, but I'm realizing that it's a real. You're it's like a parrot. I, I am a 
I can hear it. <laughs> Hope I don't say any dirty words. I never noticed it, but then I went back and I was looking. You look, you look, you look like you're in a high chair compared to me. I look like I'm sitting at the little kid's table because you're <laughs> great reading chair um i love it and whoever buys it is gonna love it too because <laughs> it's up for sale <laughs> if you're interested inquire below <laughs> or best offer <laughs> crushed velvet hey, <laughs> Oh, totally. Yeah. Okay. Think it ahead. <laughs> I love it. Starting to impress myself. You are becoming a producer. I am becoming a producer. <laughs> and there I go repeating myself. I repeat exactly what you say. <laughs> Maybe I parent medicine. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, the sun, it changed again. That light was so good. Just the way it's gonna be. I'm gonna fade in and out of the shadows, girlfriend. <laughs> if I get too shadowy, send me a life preserver and pull me back, please. I'll save you. I'll shine the light on you somehow. <laughs> I'm not sure how. Alicia, your shadow side's showing. <laughs> you got a beautiful shadow side. Embrace the shadow, girls. Embrace the shadow. Embrace the shadow. <laughs> no, we're not supposed to get rid of the shadow. We're supposed to balance the light and the shadow. It's about bringing it into awareness. Yes, and say, I see you. I see you, and I'm sorry you're afraid. And I know you're feeling doubtful, and I know you're scared and angry and just see that side of ourselves that's so true not hide from it not sweep it under the rug but know that's a part of who we are absolutely well it because mm -hmm. the shadow when it's not acknowledged it it starts to throw tantrums and it starts to act out <laughs> when you say i see you you know i i see where you're hurting or you don't feel validated or unseen or whatever it calms it it wants to it wants to know that you know that it's there yeah yeah otherwise it's just going to act out and have a big old temp temper tantrum yeah yeah <laughs> all right